what's up guys? Today I'm here with Jerome, an interview with Jerome, a Yu-Gi-Oh card game special. So we're very excited to see what he has here for us today. But first we have the World Championship 2019 playmat. Absolutely beautiful. This is the prize card for the World Championship. And uh, I'm very excited to see what exactly goes on with this. But very beautiful. So Konami's like, show it off. And so Jerome's here is gonna, Jerome's, <laughs> Jerome here is gonna show us the uh, three cards that are supposed to change the game. Yep. And uh, you were also involved in even making some of these cards yep. as well. So, so if you uh, read up on the Gold Sargophagus tin page, you know, we said set some pretty lofty goals for these cards, but uh, I think that we definitely hit them. So let's uh, start with the first one, which first is called one. Dimension Shifter. So if you remember, there's a thing that says it'll prevent graveyard dumping for a turn. Yeah. And uh, we have a lot of cards like that in Yu-Gi-Oh, but you can't really use any of them on the first turn of the duel if your opponent's just going off and playing all the thunder combos, going crazy, all yeah. that sort of thing. Uh, so we made a card that lets you do that. And that's this one, Dimension Shifter. If you have no cards in your graveyard, you can send it to the graveyard as a quick effect, and until the end of the next turn, anything that would go to the graveyard, banished instead. Wow. It's like a different dimension ground you can play with. I'm just gonna scoot it up here for you guys to check out. And so it's actually a very pretty card too. So this is art we talked about a little bit already. It's kind yeah. of based on dimension art, not necessarily DD. Oh, dimensional alchemist, but not DD art, more dimensional. Okay, very pretty. That's a nice one. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this kind of occupies the same kind of space as like a no material sort of card. Yeah. Where you know it's limited in what it does, but it's very powerful. And when you do resolve it. You got a good shot. Okay, and so this one's more of uh, prevents your opponent from doing crazy things yes. before they're doing or as they're doing them. All right, yes. hand trap. Okay. Now, if you want something that you can use after they've finished whatever they're doing, or actually any time really, uh, I got this for you. It's Nibiru, the primal being. Nibiru. Nibiru. The primal being. It already sounds like a kaiju card. <laughs> So if you look at the art there, it's uh, it's kind of spherical, like yeah. a sphere mode, but it also looks like something out of a monster movie, like a okay. And uh, the truth behind it is a little bit of both. So during the main phase, if your opponent has summoned five or more monsters turn, or more special summon, and you know, once they hit that threshold, you can use this any time during the main phase. It's a quick effect, you reveal it from your hand, and when it resolves, it tributes everything on the field. Everything. Everything. Including your monsters if you have any, so be careful if you try to play this going first. It's, uh, <laughs> okay. it's balanced out so that you can't do that without <laughs> giving up something in return. So after five summons, right? Or it's on the five fifth? Five or more. Five or more. It's okay. any time after they get to five. Wow. You can play this, tribute everything. You summon this to your field, so it's a 3,000 attack, you get a blue eye. Oh, so that's a little different. It goes to your field. Okay. To your field. What your opponent gets is a Primal Beam token, whose attack is the combined attack of everything tributed, and defense is the combined defense of everything tributed. Blake monsters obviously contribute zero to defense, and yeah. it's your token you're summoning their field, so you get to pick the mode. You know, put two and two together there for how yeah. to play that. <laughs> but the, the great thing about this card is because of the threshold, it's just the threshold. Any time after that, you're good. So if your opponent, you know, if they think you haven't got it, you can just let them play until they do something that's going to threaten it or be able to gain a monster effect, and then bam, bam, drop it out of space. And out of space, all literally, all out of literally space. Out of space. <laughs> <laughs> that is very cool. The way I think of this is when you have a duel where it feels like the only way you can possibly win is if, like, a small meteor just flies through the roof and blows up only your opponent's cards and prevents them from continuing. Wow. Here it is. And that's very easy to imagine with that card as well. Yep. Primal being. Nibiru. And you may be making a token card later, right? It's entirely possible. <laughs> Whenever we do these things that make specially named tokens, in this case the Primal Being token. The Primal Being we, uh, token. We do like to make those as well. Yeah, right. Wow. And we have one more card here from... We do. So this, is, this is the full thing. sarcophagus tip. This is also in the tip. Okay. So you get one of these three cards in each tip. So the one thing that I would consider a minus on Nibiru is that if it's not in your opening five, you're probably not going to be able to use it. Okay. So if you value being able to draw something as your sixth card instead of just getting the total blowout, if it's in your first five, I would go with Dark Ruler No More. Dark Ruler No More. Okay. So this guy's a spell card. Dark Ruler, obviously, uh, he has a lot of experience with effect negation. Okay. Being from you know, the Skill Drain family and all of that. And this card does a whole lot of that. So when you play it, you negate the effects of all your opponent's face-up monsters until the end of the turn. Uh, your opponent doesn't take any damage after that, so you can't just OTK them. Okay. 
but you know what about stuff like Hot Red Dragon Archfiend that make eight spells? Eh, they can't. Your opponent can't chain monster effects with this. Really? So it's just one turn, none of their effects. So straight negate monsters. the effects of all face of monsters your opponent currently controls until the end of this turn. For the rest of this turn, your opponent takes no damage. Yep. Neither player can activate monster effects in response. Wow. Yep, so specifically there, you stop things like Hot Red Dragon and number 38, that sort of thing. But it'll also turn off, you know, Thunder Dragon Colossus. It allows you to actually make some plays, right? Yeah, okay. So you get, that's the one turn reprieve card. Right. You, uh, website. Oh, very nice. Very, very beautiful artworks on all the cards. And this is the prismatic, the classic, or the, the older classic, prismatic like secret, right? Stars. Yeah. For, oh, yeah, superstars. Yeah. And um, this kind of art here, too, looks like our Dark Ruler is kind of no more. He's getting he's banished, time. or he's having a bad time from a skull servant or something going on right there. Very cool. All right, so those and are the 10 cards. Those are the 10 cards. And also, Jerome, today you're talking about some of the new cards from, what set is this? Fist of the Gadgets. Fist of the Gadgets. And we have an archetype. Yep. So Fire Fist is, like, that's, people really like Fire Fist. I like Fire I like Fire Fist. And Fire Fist, from, like, a game design perspective, one of the great things about them is that there are a lot of different ways to play it. There was the rank four deck that was a lot more uh, grinding and based on just poking the bear and blowing stuff up and getting more fire formations. And uh, there's the rank three deck with spear and a rooster and a kindling and all that that was more of a combo deck, kind of a precursor to the kind of things that we do today. And then there was one that was kind of in the middle. And so with these fire fist cards, we wanted to kind of give everything to all of those play styles. So there's uh, three regular main deck monsters. We've got a three, a four, and a five. Three, a four, and a five. And Ram, five. elephant, and panda. Yeah, so the fives, they never really saw a whole lot of play. But uh, we did want to make one that people would really like, and I think that uh, panda fits the bill there. Panda? Yep. So panda, if you activate a fire formation, after that chain resolves, you get to special summon panda from your hand, then summon another fire fist from the grave. Really? Yes. And uh, for the rest of the turn, you can only fire fist monsters. But that's kind of okay, considering how good the fire fist yeah, monsters is I love the art on these, by the way. These are beautiful. These are very cool. Yeah. Uh, I really like the elephant spirit there. Okay. And uh, I thought Peacock's was pretty good as well. Combination of weapons and that sort of thing. So for the rank three decks, you've got another 200 defense fire yeah, monster. Yeah. Ram. Ram is kind of like an all-fire formation version of Rooster. It has a normal summon effect that lets you get a fire formation, and a one-up special summon effect that gets a fire formation. So it's a lot like Rooster. Okay. Elephant gives you a kind of rotting captain effect and a search ability. So when you normal and special summon with bear, or an elephant here, a bear, I got bear on the line, it's very fire <laughs> Uh, you send one of your fire formations to the graveyard to special summon another fire fist from your hand. But then you can take that same fire formation and target it with bear or elephant's second ability, shuffle back into your deck, and add a level five. Okay. Like Panda, for instance. And are these cards in the OCG? These are world premiere cards. World premiere cards. The first okay. place you'll ever be able to get these is in Fist of the Gadgets. Fist of the Gadgets, wow. Well, that's very cool. So the other thing with Fire Fist is that it used, at the time, you know, it sees and synchro summon. It was one of the few decks that blended those two together. Uh, but at the time, it never used fusions. Okay. And there was also never a ritual monster for it. So we provided both of those with this set as well. So you fusion got, and uh, a ritual. Fusion and a ritual. Swan and Alon? Alon. Wow. Swan is sweet. So Swan here is just any two beast warriors. Okay. When you special summon him, he does uh, some burn damage, 200 times the number of face of fire formations you have. And he kind of harkens back to the, you know, the battle-oriented nature of like the rank four deck. So the bear has to connect. He has to do damage to get a fire formation. Gorilla has to destroy a monster. So this guy in the battle phase can send one of your fire formations to the graveyard to target and destroy any card your opponent controls. Really? That guy seems great. And it's two Beast Warrior Just monsters mixed up. Okay. So you could play it in you could play it in Moonlight if you wanted to. And what would you be using the fusion uh, the guys out? Anything really. really? Okay. Whatever you have. <laughs> because it's just any two. And you know, you, obviously you need a spell to fuse them. Yeah. And fire formations are all, you know, continuous cards, the cards that stay on the field. Oh, that's a good idea. So we made fire formation Indian here, which when you play it, you can fusion summon any beast warrior. So 
so obviously you can get this. You so there's your polymerization right, right away. But the other thing with Fire Fist is that you, know, you keep these cards on the field and you cash them in later to get effects. And you know, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, you kind of need to cash them in to get more than one effect. Yeah. So let's say you have your bear and you've played this, or you've made Swan, and you activate Swan and you send this to the graveyard, you blow up your opponent's card, and then when this is in the graveyard, you get to activate its other effect and pick up a Fire Fist monster from your graveyard, put it back in your hand. Wow. Is it? It's only one of those per turn. You can use so both in the same turn. You can only activate this card once per turn, but you can use both abilities in the same turn. Oh. So you can fusion summon this and then immediately send it away and get the card back. Wow. That's great. But then also you need a ritual spell, okay. quote unquote ritual spell. <laughs> there are no ritual spells in uh, Fire Fist. We uh, we deal with continuous cards. Right. Right. So we've got this continuous spell as well. So it's Fire Formation Domain. So when you play this, you oh, can this is such a good summon. idea. I love how you kept them continuous Fire right. Formation cards. So when you play this, you ritual summon any Fire or not, any Beast Warrior, not just Fire Fist. So I was gonna say, is there a way to use these in other other decks? Uh, yeah, this one in particular. I was like, I was just thinking this could be used in other decks that's not just uh, uh, Fire Fist decks. So like Luna Lights, Beast Warrior, Beast features, Warriors, sort of yeah. Thing. You could use it there. So, if you want to look for uh, Beast Warrior. Ritual monsters. I would check out the card database. It's easy <laughs> yeah. to search. So this is Dome Dome. Dome. Okay. And the neat thing with this is when you send it to the graveyard, you get to special summon a fire perspective. Oh boy. So let's say that you uh, pitch a monster for Elin. So he's got two abilities. One of them is you can discard a monster and set any fire formation from your deck or graveyard to the field. Wow. The other one is you can send a fire fist or fire formation from your field of the graveyard to negate a monster effect. Oh, that's and a really those good. Are both monster decks. Wow. So let's say you, you pitch a monster to Elon. Well, then you can just get it right back with Domain and special summon it to the field. Some combinations you can do with this deck involve stuff like, okay, I'll fusion summon Swan, use it, and then in main phase two, I'll tribute it to Domain to get Elon. And when I use Ellen's ability on my opponent's turn, I'll send Domain to the graveyard and special summon back Swan. Wow. So they kind of part so they work together. together. Wow. That's really cool. Can you not get anybody else here? And then we've got uh, we got a few more. So there's the Link Monsters. Uh, you probably is this, is already this know. all the Fire Formation cards in the set? Oh, no. There's two more Fire Formation Oh, okay. Okay. We'll get there. <laughs> so there's Eagle, the Link Monster. That's, uh, you probably already know about that one. That is the one that has already been released in Japan. Okay, it has lets been released. You skip paying costs for I mean, monsters that involve sending fire fists and fire formations to the grave. You just don't have to pay them if you don't want to. Wow. But you can if you want to, and you might want to if you have no air income. And it has another ability to bring back a fire formation to your hand and foolish or send to the graveyard from your deck another one. So okay. you use that with Rooster a lot. And the new Link monster is uh, Peacock, which works kind of like Peacock. a miniature Warlow type card. And this is not OCG. That is not. That is new. <laughs> that, that is new. That is new. Has there been other girl fire uh, fist monsters? Uh, no, she's the first. She's one. the first girl. Wow. So her ability is uh, you activate it when you declare an attack with her. Uh, at the same time, it gives you to use Utopia, that sort of thing. And okay. send a fire formation to the graveyard to take control of one of your opponent's monsters and put it in the zone she points to you. And that monster is, like, if you see her weapon there, yeah. she's got that chain whip sword. Okay. So envision her ability as her, like, striking out with the chain whip sword and, like, lassoing the monster uh, yeah. and yanking it over your feet. Yanking it over. So that crazy. monster, he is confined. He can't attack okay. that turn. And you have to give it back. You get away at the end of the turn if you don't just win. So if you don't just uh, win. <laughs> like sometimes you do that. So that's uh, how Peacock works there. And if so this leads into more combos as well, or it's more of a so there's two things that you do with Peacock. Uh, one is because Panda locks you in only Fire Fist for the turn. If you need to just get two of your Fire Fists off the field and or get another summon, uh, which will boot up this thing. Fire we'll Fortress atop landing peak. Yes. Wow. Just gonna show that there. That is a very pretty card. Yeah, so this always counts as a fire formation and it gets a fire fist counter for every fire fist you summon. It's kind of like gateway of the six. Yeah. And you cash those in for abilities. So if you just need to get from like five to six, but you're frozen to fire fist, having an extra copy of Peacock 
and your extra deck just to use for that purpose can be very handy. And uh, Peacock's other ability to make it so she can't be attacked while she's pointing at something, that's when you would use that ability. Okay. So if you just needed to make it to get to that six counter, so the six counters for Fire Fortress gets you any Beast Warrior from your deck. Oh, it's a gateway type card. And this, I'm guessing, is one of the first Fire Formations that is a field spell. It's the only one. It's the only field so, yeah, spell. Yeah, Fire Force never had a field spell. Okay. It was before the days where field spells became kind of an integral part. Yeah, yeah. So this is an opportunity to go back and This is give so it cool. I love the fire formation cards. And then of course, thinking back, you know, we have like the ultimate rare bears yep. and then of the, the, Yeah, of the classic cards, what do you think would make its way into this deck? Uh, I think the key ones are these four. Well aside from okay. Tanky and Tensu, Tanky, yeah, yeah. obviously. Uh, okay. Yoko's really good as well because it's removal and you can activate it multiple times a turn. But in terms of the name deck monsters, uh, Raven okay. is key to this deck. He's the king. It does not have a once per turn on its ability to set something. So you can summon it, send it to the graveyard for a link summon, bring it back, send it to the graveyard for another link summon, oh, man. bring it back again. So all of these guys kind of work the with dragon, it. Okay. send it away for something, fuse it away, etc. Wow. And uh, dragon in particular is also important for his trap hit ability. So like they played Tankin back in the old days, the plus 700 that also gives your guys plus 300. Yeah. And they would set that off of dragon. I remember that, actually. For modern times, we probably need something a little better than an attack boost, so we got ultimate fire formation. System. Oh no, counter, counter trap. Maybe it's a little better than plus 700 attack. This one <laughs> A little bit better. Negates a spell or trap activation. Oh, and, and it's destroy. a fire formation and card as well. Wow. Oh my god. So you can do like, play dragon, you can play a fire formation, and search this. But then when you play this again on your opponent's turn, if you still have Dragon out, you can send another copy of your deck, of it from your deck for your turn. Oh no. This card seems super good. Yes, yeah, so you can only play one of those per turn. Though, so you can't one per turn, out. okay, yeah. Negate the activation if you do destroy that card. So that's a spell trap. No, not monster, just spell and trap. trap. Okay. So you have Elin to take care of a monster and Sinto to take care of a spell. Got it, okay. And then the other old ones that you definitely want to use are uh, Spirit and Rooster. Okay. So and Bear, but. Of course, Bear. He's here. Tiger King is nice. Okay. And then, uh, wow. And then, did you take part in creating any of these pictures, or were you kind of. The art, no. In the art, no. I didn't okay. work on the art, but I did work on the effects. Okay. Uh, one of the things specifically was tweaking the numbers. On okay. Being peak. Uh, this is the kind of card that you Gateway. Wanted. I remember yeah. Gateway going off real hard. Yeah, yeah, Six Gateway Samurai is my favorite uh, deck, and I was like, man, wild. yeah, Gateway is crazy. So, one of the important things was making sure that we costed this aggressively enough that people would try to do the bigger effects. So, you'll find once you start working with these cards that a lot of your commons give you exactly six okay. summons. So, if you started with the AMP, it kind of becomes an extension. Exactly six summons, watch out. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> so, yeah, just opening with this in addition to some other combos that wouldn't get you all the way to what you're looking for, having this would get you that last loss that you need. Okay. Or, if you want to think really outside the box, if you're trying to get to this 10 effect, the 10 effect summons any Beast Warrior from your deck or extra deck, ignoring its conditions. What? So, I didn't even realize there was a 10. Yes. From your deck or extra deck, ignoring summoning conditions. That's crazy. So it's, uh, it's a fun little read on the card database if you go through all the extra deck monsters that are Beast Warriors. The things you might want to summon are like Gladiator Beast, Draclamos. Really? Uh, the Big Lunalites. Big Lunalites, Big Gladiator Beast. Wow. Maybe uh, something a little off the wall like Gaia Drake, the Universal Force. So this this can't really this has to be played a Fire Fist deck though, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm a Fire Fist monster. Yes. Okay. Do you think that people will be splicing uh, different uh, War Beast Warrior decks together? Possibly. If, if you were, you would probably do it with Lunalites. Lunalites. Yeah, I've yeah, seen Lunalites already mixed. I think with Dangers or was it other? They use some Dangers. They use some Fire Formations. Fire Formations. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes they use some Orcas. There's a lot of creative things going on with Lunalites. So that could be very interesting. Wow. But, you know, you don't even have to play it in the, all that combo way because we didn't get rid of any of the old play style of Fire Fist. And it's especially important, you know, with cards like Nibiru that you need to be able to throttle yourself yeah. and play under that five summon limit. And Fire Fist, you know, having all the plays it had from before and new ones that are really powerful, like these guys or Swan, that helps you do that. Like, you can play... You know, the grind game as well as the combo game. It's really kind of a fusion of past and present. And so, of all these new Fire Fist cards, which kind of one or two are you most excited for? Let's see. I really like Panda. Really? So, like having Panda. the level five 
that is just really good after all the Fire Fist level fives in the past never really made it into decks. Yeah. Finally having one that I'm certain is going to line its way into decks <laughs> makes me happy. Okay. And I like these. The, yeah. the ritual and the fusion. The ritual and the fusion that are continuous continue. spells. Yeah, that is crazy. That also give you something when they go into the graveyard. I think this is really cool. Well, this, that's, a, that's just game changing in general. So that's really fun. I like that a lot. And then of course ten counters. That's that's new. <laughs> So I'd, I'd say that these are my favorites. Wow. All right, Jerome. Well, thanks for being here. Um, is there any other things that you've been working on lately that you'd like to mention? Oh, or? Well, I mean, August is just packed. So okay. we had Rock the Vault, and the next week we have this. And this is right before the YCS. Oh, man. So I'm kind of hoping that we'll see some uh, fire kits next to Portland. Oh. And then after that, we have... The Pyramid the Pyramid is coming in, right? Yep. Oh man, everyone is excited for those with alternate art uh, hand traps as well in there, right? Uh, that's Dual Devastator. Oh, that's man, Dual that's Devastator. Oh man. It's, we just got so much stuff. <laughs> so much is going on. And it's all pretty darn cool. So, so in the Pyramid 10, real quick, some other alternate car cards to expect from there? Um, so, basically, uh, you get what, five promos. Uh, you get one of these three. Okay. You get two out of five of the Egyptian God cards with their Takahashi art. Because of Takahashi. What? Which have never been available together in one place. And uh, the other two cards you might get in that set are Regeki and Monster Lord, just classic cards. Classic. And then there are six new cards that you get to offer. And that's what? Aunt Karibo, uh, Flatty and Oracle Mana. These are kind of inspired by uh, the 20th anniversary of the series. Really? Yeah. Uh, Chaos, Magician of Black Chaos Max. There seems to be so much value from this. This is insanity. There's one of the gorgeous. Yeah, you probably haven't seen one in person, huh? Yeah. So the picture on the website, I don't think it really does it justice. The pyramid tins are actually they're, they're beautiful. Oh man. Yeah. We're hoping at the end of this trip we may get to see one. So we yeah, we don't know yet. But uh, it's neither here nor there, huh? Yeah. No so, very excited for that overall though. And uh, wow. Thank you so much, Rome, for doing all this. Again, this is our first interview, I think, yep. ever with a Konami TCG card. Yeah, we're specialist. in the lab yeah. a lot. We don't get out too much. Yeah, wow. So thank you again so much for being here, Jerome. Absolutely. And thank you guys for watching and super unlucky signing out. Awesome video. Thank you so much. Yep.